reflection off of your light there. Yeah, it's, that's we are it. live. We're officially live. That must be a new light for you. It says uh, no, live, but do you see the long counter? Long. That's what really counts. You seem a little bit in shadow, to tell you the truth. Yeah. And that light's... Shadow yeah. oh, there kingdom. You go. Hmm. That's oh. right, shadow kingdom. Yeah. That we're going to need to uh, get back up into storefront, too. So. Yeah. So that... Yeah. Uh, Some issues have occurred, but uh, it all's good. All's good. Glitches. Glitches happen. Glitches happen. Yeah. Hasn't been a good week for Luke and behind the scenes on... Uh, fund my comic but we're getting it worked out just like i just got my facebook worked out there we are hey, Come leroy. In hey nita morning S leroy might not even be here still because he was here at four in the morning saying spang well spang. i mean <laughs> if he was here at four in the morning which was two minutes ago no 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 he was That's in there before then that was my oh, four you're saying an hour ago. Four, four in the morning. Yeah, he was here an hour oh, ago. Okay. Nita wants everybody to know that you can help support ICN, Indie Comics Network, by sending stars. So all earnings go towards uh, channel expenses, supporting other creators, and supporting other creators. I'm supposed to be supported there, too. So if you enjoy this program, please send us some stars. I'm still waiting on my check. But... And this, uh, this stream yard ain't cheap. So No, it's not. Boy. I was politely told not to expect anything. So that's the way it is. That's the way it is. We don't do this for money anyway. We don't do it for fame either. And now yeah, you well, know really? the rest of the story. Exactly. And now you know the rest of the story. Sure. We're going to run the opening, folks. Come on in. Come on in. Private chat says backstage. Momentum. Oh, that's you. I can. <laughs> Mr. I can. Mr. Rex. <laughs> that's me. I'm in two places at one time, We're multitasking. Uh, Here we go. Russ is in the zone. You can tell. He's yep. focused. He's like focused eagle here. claw. First, a word from, uh, what's his Must name? Rand Randy Quaid. Holy shit. That is the craziest thing I have ever seen. And I'm Dennis Quaid, and Dennis Quaid has seen some shit. Dennis Quaid, that is, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think you said Randy Clack. I, I did. If you look at something and it's nothing there, what's what's the difference of figuring out what it was in the first place? Exactly. Yeah. Russ, your camera is breaking up. Oh, you need to shake that weird. wire a little bit. There your you go. Your transporter is yeah. spattering your atoms. It's like your cam cord was unplugged. Oh, no, I've been trapped in a transporter accident. Everybody's having... <laughs> software glitches so come on in folks we see you out there all four of you so far there's more of you in in the wings there you deeply appreciate you being here no pressure no pressure now comes the part where we throw our heads back and laugh ready ready <laughs> What was that? This is not a showway. We need total concentration. Now, once again, this time, we see. Some men just want to watch the world burn. Can nobody tell me nothing? How dare you? Get off my lawn. Don't mess with the bull, young man. You'll get the horns. Do you draw the Flintstones naked? There's a market for that. Why? We know why. <laughs> <laughs> why? Uh, I'm not sure I do. Oh. Adult program, folks, not meant for children, as uh, Dave will tell you. Why? Because fuck them, that's why. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> You're... What the fuck is the matter with people in this business? Exactly. Glenn can tell us. 
<laughs> We're supposed to be a positive program, folks. We're supposed to be a positive program. Glenn will not be telling us. <laughs> it would take too long. And you know, anyway. Joe, phone you, bitch. I love this shit. Exactly. Russ will be right back. I'm sure he's uh, trying to get the hamsters up to speed in the on the transporter. Wheel. In the transporter. Mm hmm. Folks, thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Randy Zimmerman. I am a uh, editor in chief of Arrow Comics, longtime comic book producer. Been at this for many, many decades, and uh, real happy to be here in podcasting. So uh, we do two shows here at S at uh, ICN and the Randy Zim YouTube channel and the uh, Comic Book Black Belt YouTube channel as well. It's Comics by Night, which you're watching now, and Sunday Funnies at 9 a.m. on Sundays, where we go over some great unusual things. The, Great sequential art, the stuff that really inspires us. So, see, I, I had faith in Leroy. He's still here. Leroy is here. Yes, he is. Leroy says, uh, I'm not sure how I feel about this new angle going on with Russ. Yeah. <laughs> well, Russ. Well, his equipment right. clearly doesn't appreciate it. It's, He's not sure about your new angle. It's because it's it's artwork angle. It's I'm in the middle of stuff. So, it's like I'm staring into the sun, the eclipse all over again without the glasses. We I think it's I think it's your outside window too. Yeah, it's the outside window as well. Sorry, you're just gonna have to cope. If you don't like it, don't look. <laughs> Mid afternoon. Well, you won't have to look at Russ for much longer, Leroy. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll be concentrating anyway. on the book at hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> also joining us this morning's Mr. Glenn Fleming. Glenn, introduce yourself. Hi, hey everybody. My name is Glenn Fleming. I'm a writer. I've got 11 books published. You can find them all on Amazon. Uh, I'm an artist. I draw lots of things, comics and do paintings and portraits and whatever people want me to do and some that I want to do. And I also publish uh, a magazine called Comics Unlimited, of which number 15 is now currently available on Amazon. All right. Also joining us, Russ. Russ, introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Russ Leach. I'm a comic book <coughs> artist and I know nothing of the technicalities of getting paid that's the trouble <laughs> that's the bloody trouble okay yeah i'll just what a week what a week anyway we have had a successful campaign we're very happy with the shadow kingdom great at the moment i'm doing some artwork for someone else here you go quick flash it's all shiny yeah yeah, yeah. A bit, bit, bit of ink work going on there there you um, go very nice so that's what i do if you want to find out more about the shadow kingdom more about the moving on with the atlantean with myself and randy more about the other stuff that I do, go to russleach.com, sign up for the email li uh, list there, and uh, you'll find out everything you need to know. Cool. Also joining us this morning is Rex. Rex, Devil Flyer Rex. Introduce yourself, buddy. From the grave. From uh, the grave. Who does your hair, my pillow, uh, too early in the morning, 4 a.m. in the morning uh, here. Um, well, 4.10, technically. And counting um rex christian everywhere under devil flyer momentum some something like that derivative x instagram uh devil flyer the 48 page epic magazine over there on fun my comics still now in demand get it while it's good hot <clears throat> well, it's got yeah, what russ said get it while it's hot hey everybody Hey, everybody, we're all going to get laid. Well, wouldn't that be good if it was true? <laughs> and that's good news. It's good news. <laughs> yeah. Two fisted the tails, folks. Say who what? I missed that, yes. man. Oh, just, I had that, I was having that discussion with somebody the other day. I miss a lot of those old great guys. Mitch Hedgeberg. Actually got to see him in in uh, live one time. He was hilarious. That's it. Perfect. All right. That's the way to let. That's the way it'll stay. For, well, until I jostle it with my large until you stomach. Mess it up. Until I <laughs> mess it up. We're starting with two. We're restarting with two fisted tails. Number thirty three. Yahoo! Great Wally stuff, your fucks. Folks, fucks. Great stuff here, fucks. Yeah. Great stuff here, folks. Oh, look at that. Is that John Severin? 
That's Wally that is Wood. Wally Wood. Wally Wood okay. inking there. Wallace, Wallace Wood, yes. Fantastic. And you know what that <laughs> means? First story is by Jack, Jack Davis. Davis. <laughs> And a great I, uh, Mad Magazine ad, by the way, also by Wally Wood. That's John Severin. Oh, John Severin. Sorry. It's a I had ad. some dealings with Wally Wood's uh, uh, Richard Pryor was his name. He was uh, did a bunch of lithography prints <laughs> with uh, Wallace Wood. Hmm. Not the comedian. Very nice man. It's a Pryor, Richard Pryor. Okay. Never mind. Before the accident. Before the accident. Signal core. Look at the difference in inking here. They're trying yeah. to bring focus to these characters. Yeah. In the center. Nice rifle leaning up against the Jeep. Mm -hmm. Now Mark Drucker that also did a lot of work for he he <laughs> he did some early he did uh the earliest stuff on Sergeant Rock, a six-page story for the prototype to Sergeant Rock. Yeah, we had a Mort Drucker story a couple episodes back mm. in Two Fisted Tales here. Yeah. Some great war work here. Some more great inking. Look at that. Just I like the, yeah, I like the, way, I like the way it's leaving, the, leaving it all open. Yeah. It's really clear. Yeah. Almost ghost-like there. Yeah. At least that black and white. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah, so that he can sit within the um the shadow. The shadow. Yeah. And that that is a perfect example of knowing where the shadows are and yet cheating because all those people yeah. would be they they'd be in darkness. Yeah. So instead of putting all the, yeah, instead of putting all the actual lighting on those people, he's made it so that they pop out. And yeah, well, it's it probably works. there's probably a layer of blue. Yeah, right well, that's what here. I'm saying. If there was, yeah. he would have been a, 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 he would have been aware of the colorist, okay. Right. And and like if that was all in blue, it would look like it was in shadow. But he's mm -hmm. not. He he's completely understands the medium he's working with. <coughs> that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's it's cheating because it works. It's comic mm -hmm. book logic, yeah. and that's what we need to remember when drawing kids. Yeah. Every deep water Aquaman or Submariner story is like that. Yeah. They should be in total darkness with no light once you go past a certain depth, but it's never depicted that way. No. no. And that's so quick zip screen, graduated tone here. It's the only zip screen on the page. Mm -hmm. And that's what everything it's... else, all of this work up here is all just line work. It's all cross hatching. Up through here on the following page, <coughs> up in here. So uh, just beautifully done cross hatching. If you look at the guy in the second panel looking at the audience with the rifle, mm -hmm. straight above, no, no, the other, the other page, straight above your hand. Yeah. 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 That's that's um, a sort of a raw shark, isn't it? Dave Gibbons kind of um, uh, drawing from what? Ominous you... shadows. Yeah. Yeah. Which obviously Dave Gibbons will probably have seen this. Because it was what 1952 or something, yeah, 53, I think. Long 52, time, 53. Long yeah. time before Dave Gibbons, probably when Dave Gibbons was born. <laughs> yeah, May, June, I believe it's uh 1953. Uh, three, yep. In your estimation, what made EC such a powerhouse until they came in with the code and they were ruined? Gaines. Gaines, Feldman, and Kurtzman, the people that were in charge, editorial, the, the talent that they found. Gaines was a pool yeah. magnet or a talent magnet that attracted only the best. They only took the best. I wonder if Marie Severin did the colors on this. Yes, she did. Okay. So yes. I'm sure he was familiar with what she would do with it. Yep. She Absolutely. actually expanded on the colors, you know, at this mm -hmm. time. As much as you could, limited like she was. Yeah. And we're looking at the Russ Cockrum hardback volumes of this as well, by the way. And all of the uh, all of the covers 
in this were recolored uh, to original specs from Marie. Well, good. She went through and, and recolored all of the cover work for it. Shot in black and white off of the originals before they were put up for auction by Heritage. Otherwise, it it wouldn't have popped like it does. Uh, no. It would have yeah. looked pixelated. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you'd have had those dots working. I don't know if, if they had that on the cover or not, but yeah. I'm actually pro dot. Pro dot. Uh-huh. That's a Harvey uh, property we'll have to get into one of these days. Little dot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting here. Being shot up. Eric and Boyd in the house. Dag Nabbit. I'm officially an old man, just like Rex. Awake too early. <laughs> Happy you're here, Eric and Boyd. Boyd. Eric and Boyd. Dag Nabbit. I'm officially an old man, just like Rex. Like we're too early. So I wear comics by night, folks. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that line work. Except yeah. that doesn't line up in the UK. No. Oh, it's still too early here, really, even at 10 o'clock. Just say hello. Pole work here, snapping that line, tapping that pole with the. <clears throat> now, did the UK ever get any of this stuff? I mean, maybe in reprints, but I mean, in the fifties, did any of this stuff ever make it over to the UK? I wouldn't know. I'm just. A I don't know. Snapper. I've never seen yeah. it. Yeah, I, I've never seen it. I, I didn't know it until until I was educated by uh, by Randy. I uh, I didn't. I wasn't aware of this stuff even. So. Hey Rex, not aware of the EC line at all. Hey, oh, it's oh yeah, EC, but yeah, not of, but um, the monster stuff. Yeah, and mm -hmm. two fisted tails. I, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't aware of. Yeah, the originals. I saw on Twitter a <clears throat> a picture of a boy, and they had all these EC comics up yeah. on the top ledge, very cheap, you know. And he's looking through and pulling out like a Green Lantern, <laughs> and he's like. And they made a comment, you know, he's looking at the wrong books, you know, as far as collectability. Growing up in uh, high Thank school, you, I used to go to a skill center, <clears throat> learned uh, the commercial art trade, learned all the materials that uh, Photoshop replaced, like within a, within a decade. And um, we I used to have big arguments with the class, the, a couple of comic guys in the class uh, behind me. And uh, they were huge EC fans. I was a huge Marvel DC fan. I told them they didn't know what they were talking about. They told me I didn't know what I was talking about. And uh, one of the guy's dads had a complete collection. And uh, wow. this is kind of the uh, roots of fandom because these books were so good yeah. that there was a huge fan base behind them. And a lot of fanzines based on EC came out. Once the code kicked in and the uh, and the EC comics went away, folks uh, still had super fond memories of the quality of the work and and were doing like EC addict uh, fanzines all over the place. Yeah. And then uh, Wally Wood was doing Wits End, which was an independent publication that had a lot of these guys in it. And then they were picked up by Marvel and Warren started up and picked up a lot of these guys and they just kept finding work you're that good you do x says oh no i understand that problem at jolly green i hope uh you can get a proper get proper rest yeah yeah leroy says i prefer uh the new colors uh but i am under 50 we are yeah uh jolly oh, says he's you, having so he's nice having trouble someone. sleeping yeah so nice having someone young on the team. There you go. Glad you're in the house, though, Jolly. You're welcome. If we put you back to sleep, we won't take offense. Yeah. <laughs> 
just more great, great war stuff here. Zip screen here. Just look at all of that. Just chaos. Yeah, but it's Boy, not. Yeah. It doesn't look like your typical war book. No, it's not that, meant to be. That DC, you know, came out with uh, a little lighter than this. Yeah. When they picked up GI Combat. Because they team. weren't the original publishers of GI Combat. No. They inherited that from quality. Yeah. Yeah. I just found that out a couple months ago. They were That was one of the titles that they bought quality for. Yeah, I've got uh, some quality of the early line. quality stuff. They didn't publish it for eh, too long. I mean, a couple of years, two, three years. Yeah. Yeah, but it was a solid enough title for DC to continue. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so was Blackhawk. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, that, I understand Blackhawk and Plastic Man were their main reason for picking up the... Here, by the way, be beautiful the links on these pages. Oh, yeah. Just well, now, where... I nice. thought Plastic oh, exactly. Man was... Faucet. No, Plastic Man was quality. Was I uh, was it okay? Yeah, it's one of the few quality superheroes that Will Eisner didn't create. It was created by Jack Cole. I, they also picked up Faucet, though. They didn't do that. They, they technically they never did that. They um oh, okay. they didn't they didn't pay for Captain Marvel Shazam until like the early or mid eighties. Before well, that, early they 70s, were... I know they came in with Uncle Sam and Black Condor and all those characters, right? That was early in, 80s, yeah. In their books. Yeah. But uh, that was uh, their... Uh, no, they, they went in... They, they did ahead. a crossover in Justice League in the 70s with no, those it was characters. Early 80s. It was a real early 80s. <clears throat> you want I me think. to pull out the production art? <laughs> no, I can tell you it was the numbers um, 102, 103. Okay, so... You're saying that's oh, all right. I'm gonna check eBay on that. <laughs> Dick Dillon, Dick Dillon, Dick Giordano. It's one of my favorite stories. It's Crisis on Earth X is where they were introduced in. Oh, oh right. And, yeah, exactly. You and they were using right. they they started using some of the quality reprint stuff, Dial Man stories and um the Ray mm -hmm. and uh, Uncle Sam in the back of the super spectaculars that came out in the real late 70s. I have one of those uh uh covers approval covers one, to the to one, one of the, those one of the justice league just, covers yeah uh -huh. yeah where they're where they're rushing towards each other really that's sweet yeah that's like an a awesome big X. That, yeah it's an iconic cover yeah very iconic and the one before that had them uh rising up out of a wisp of smoke just like um justice league 24 crisis on earth 2 It's a crazy, crazy cool story. They ended up uh, ripping it off for um, Crisis on uh, uh, Infinite Earths, I think it was, on the CW network. Only they didn't you use all the Justice Fighters like in it. 104 and 105, is that right? Nope, 102, 103. 102, 103, okay. It's part of their annual Justice League, Justice Society crossover. Right, yeah. <clears throat> and Dick, Dick Dillon pencils, really Dick Giordano inks. Yeah. <clears throat> just a just just a little note here for the audience and anyone else who might come across the uh, video so that you can share it out to everyone else is the amount of knowledge that's going on the amount of incidental trivia that you're learning about oh, our, bits and pieces <clears throat> that these guys know just sit and listen kids our, our conversation goes all over the place so <laughs> it's part of the fun of the show well you know comics go all over the place yeah yeah, yeah. Eric says, I know this is common knowledge, but Plastic Man first appeared with police comics, then on to quality, and of course, DC. I have to be a nerd, even though right. you guys know that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and we'll look spirit. at some early Plastic plastic Man here eventually. I've got a couple of the early archives that are really good, because that, that Jack Cole material is just unbelievably uh, great. Just real oh. solid and Oh, yeah. Very imaginative and very funny. Great stuff. Anyway, more Jack Davis here. So we turn the page and end this story. Look at that explosion. Did you guys see Graham Nolan's Two-Fisted Tales title that he came out with not too long ago? 
Yeah, man, manly, two fisted manly comics or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I yeah, was out. I, yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't get it. It's one of those many campaigns I wasn't able to buy into. So, due to lack of funds. Yeah. You can't get everything. Yeah. Now you can't get everything. I always found it interesting regarding the connection between Batman and Plass. Yeah. Some good brave and the bold stories. Well, the spirit first made his appearance in police comics as well. I think it was like issue eight or something like that. And it, in regular comics, yeah. He started out in the spirit. Yeah, in section. regular comics. Yeah. Yeah. I've actually got a uh, spirit number three. A lot of people would call that a racist cover nowadays. Oh, with Ebony? Yeah, with uh -huh. Ebony on the cover. Yeah. It's just sad folks want to take stuff out of context. Yeah. If you're not putting yourself back in that time, with it, which is hard to do. Can't believe that I can't find the Justice League of America coming up with JLA and newer titles with my search. I can pull that cover up if you want. Yeah, with quality, they came in and bought the entire line, so they inherited the entire uh, uh, superhero group. But with the faucet, they didn't, so why can't we all use faucet? Because they were first to the game using those characters again? No, t technically you can. You can reprint all of that old stuff, and it has <clears throat> been reprinted quite a bit yeah uh by by other sources but you it's that thin line you don't want to tread you don't want to tick off dc and warner brothers and they've since come out with their own version of all of those characters so they pretty much have the image re and the um the logos and all of that trademark secured right even though they um they uh they didn't use they didn't use any of the faucet characters that happened one of the later justice society justice league crossovers where they decided to put them in they didn't have the rights to them they just used it anyway because nobody was going to argue with them and they had already paid for captain marvel at that point they thought they had the entire faucet pantheon and they they really didn't they didn't really have a claim to it but they used them anyway Ah, uh, okay. I might be wrong. It wasn't 102, was it? 102's got well, a different I, cover. I, I, I couldn't even get the old ones to come up. <clears throat> Although I'm trying. 102's got the, pre that's the previous crossover where um, they they bump into the Seven Soldiers of Victory. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's got a classic cover to it too with... Uh, uh, Superman standing on a stone saying one of us is about to die. And it was a cheap out because it turned out to be Wing. It was the companion, the Asian stereotype companion to the Crimson Avenger. Hey, you got to get rid of those stereotypes somehow. Yeah. 108 is the one that you have. Uh, cover two. Oh, two. It. I can here. Just give me a second to get past all of the. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm lo looking for the imagery, and all they want to do is show me all the eBay offers. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Maybe I'm over I on Amazon. I can't I, believe it's so hard know. to pull up the original Justice League of America. I guess because it's got America in the title, they don't want to use it. Yeah, I just cut I down to Justice League. There we go. Uh. Yes. Boom, that's a good image. We're waiting. View image. Hey, give me a second. Our school library had like a probably action comics number one, at least the Superman story, had the plastic man story from Blaze Comics number one. That's it. Yeah, I've got the approval cover to that. There's that. There's that cover. cover. Very classic. Yeah. One oh it must be one oh seven, one oh eight then. I had my numbers wrong. Sorry. And do that. you know what year? See, I'm saying seventies. Late seventies, maybe. 
Um, let me find it here. Oh, that that doesn't do it. Nope. Did you say it was uh, 108? Yeah. Okay. It's got, uh, it's dated December, whatever it is. Uh, Who was here. the chick? At, the That's show. a phantom lady. Is it? Phantom lady. Okay. Yeah. Well, not like Matt. You, no, Matt Baker used to draw her. Yeah. 1973. See, I told you it was early 70s. But you oh. wanted to argue. No, that's 80s. No, okay. no, no. I thought it was 80s. So. Well, it's 20 center. Hello. Yeah, it's, uh, it's yeah. Indicator you're right. right 73. <laughs> Don't okay. argue. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. Outpost, John Severn. This has John a Zulu Seven. feel to yes. it or a Gunga Den yep. feel to it. Isn't that the movie with Cary Grant, Gunga Den? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great movie. French Foreign Legion. And then later in the 60s, Zulu. Yeah. With Michael Caine. I think. Eric says, uh, regarding rights, Rex has the right to party with Geritol, Metamucil, and Mucilix. Yeah, baby. <laughs> now we're getting personal. How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> These comics seem all about the story, Randy. Little, little tug on the collar. Well, yes. Story and art. Hmm. Made for adults. Oh, man. So are they doing the Jay Ward thing, made for adults, but kids nope. watch it too? Yeah, no, actually, uh, uh, Bill Gaines ended up inheriting the EC right. line from his dad and yeah. decided to make comics that he wanted to read. So that's what he right. did. Because I guess it didn't matter to him if they, or how much they sold, but they sold like wildfire anyway. So, and I know his father did a bunch of the religious stuff early on in the forties. I mean, thick tomes of the Bible and stuff like well, that. Well, I think there's a connection to that and his being at national periodicals and approving Moulton's Wonder Woman when it came through. He's the one that really pushed for it to be published. I don't know if it was some sort of penance or or what, but uh, mm -hmm. I think he figured out the power of comics. And when he started EC, he called it educational comics and did picture stories from the Bible that yeah, lasted yeah. for many decades. In fact, um, Bill kept it in, uh, in print for, uh, I think during the whole time he was printing comics, he kept picture stories from the Bible available and in print. It's got a lot of different print runs to it. Yeah, my very friend, difficult. Very difficult to find. Has some originals, and I mean, they're they're thick, like yeah. probably cardboard cover, you know, hardback, thick books. Some of them are thicker mm -hmm. than others, but yeah, they're amazing. There's a number of different reprints of them out there. More Severin. That's John Severin. So, what is the connection between Marie Severin and John Severin? Is that are they brother sister? Brother sister, right? Yeah. Still with us, Glenn? Yeah, I'm just looking at the artwork and uh, listen to listen to you talk about Plastic Man. Ah. <laughs> I love Plastic Man. One of the I best. Hate that they make him goofy most of the time. He should. I like that Roy Thomas actually played him as a serious hero in All Star Squadron. Yeah. He deserves more love than we give him. <laughs> Who, Roy Thomas? Yes, Glenn. Now, Roy Thomas, I was going to mention, or was it Roy Thomas? He did, he did uh, early fan scene, right? Yeah. In the yeah. 60s when he was a younger kid yep uh alter ego 
so alter ego yeah publication still coming out from two morals so they still you're saying problem. you're saying he's probably like second generation compared to like the ec fans oh, yeah. that came out in the 50s yep yeah he was probably a real young lad when this stuff come out yeah real young yeah but if you're in the right. city you, you can get your hands on that stuff leroy says i'm reading all-star squadron now oh, the early cool. alter egos yeah Gee, Leroy, can't you take an hour just to watch what we're doing and then go back to your reading? <laughs> it's moving too slow. How dare Put a bit you. Of zip, zip screen back here. It's better than, um, what was it up there? Eric, not Eric. Uh, Jolly Green. Huh. He's, just, he's just watching us because he's awake. It's better than sex. <laughs> <laughs> Comics better than sex. Uh, I always thought that till I had sex. And then more great Severin. More great Severin here. <laughs> Love that face here. Great stuff. Um. So who's next? Jack Davis. Was it Wally Wood? I already saw Jack Davis get the middle here with their little uh, pro story. Here's the ad for picture stories from the Bible. Weird Fantasy. Another title that we'll, uh, we'll look at eventually. What a great title that is. Some fun stuff. Who's next? It's Pearl Steve Diver. Oh. <laughs> Joe Kubert. Joe Kubert. That, that guy looks like a Steve Bitco face. It does. Looks like there's a lot of Ditko in here. Uh -huh. yeah. And Ditko yeah. was just starting out. So how much was an influence was Ditko on these guys? Probably none sure. at all. No, <laughs> it's probably more Kubert's influence on Ditko. He's yeah. probably just just right before Ditko breaks in. Maybe Ditko I would say this about it. it. Could look at that face know. on the look at that face on the right hand side over the fish. Yeah, he might have inked it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's it. I think Dick, I think Dick Coe's ink mount. Does it give it credit? No. It Brand. says Kubert. I'd put money on Dick Coe ink in that. As as far as I know, uh, Dick Coe didn't work for EC. He started work over at Charlton. <laughs> I oh think yeah. He, I think he was working for him there. <laughs> working working for what? Who who's who's who published this? EC. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, his third thing that he did was for like Jack Kirby and Joe Simon, the uh, Captain 3D comic in like 53, maybe. It's right about the time here. Yeah. Yeah. I will look him up and see what they have to say. Since he is a, officially a Disney legend now. Oh, boy. You just had to. PP on it, didn't you? <laughs> he said they settled the estate, so boom, they gave him a they gave him a plaque. They gave him a chunk of money. I mean, the estate. Oh yeah, hope. yeah, they did. They so they they, they settled the. They were in dispute about what Doctor Strange and and Spider Man. Uh, yeah, mostly Amazing Fantasy fifteen and the early Doctor Stranges. Apparently, he didn't. Uh, uh, the work for hire contract that he signed was real um, iffy. Uh, loophole. Yeah, very iffy. Yeah. Uh, following his discharge from Ditko says junior high school was part of the group of students that uh, crafted wood models of German airplanes and civilian World War II aircraft cutter or aircraft spotters. Uh, upon graduating from the Greater Johnstown High School in 45, he enlisted in the U.S. Uh, Army on October 26, 1945, and did military service on uh, Allied-occupied Germany, where he drew comics for an Army newspaper. Uh, let's see, before that... Uh, sh no, no, You're no. going way back. Yeah. <laughs> 
Following his discharge, Ditko learned that his idol Batman artist Jerry Robinson was uh, teaching at the Cartoonist and Illustrator School, later the School for Visual Arts in New York City. Moving there in 50, he enrolled in the art school uh, under the GI Bill. Yeah. Pardon me, had to have a couple lung there. No. Um, <laughs> just the one. Just, just one, the, thank goodness. Good. Silly cat shedding. So uh, getting mm. the stupid hairs down my throat just drives me nuts. Mm. Anyway. Quit licking her. Yeah, I didn't, I'm not licking her at all. She comes up and she insists on being petted, and those hair that hair just flies all over the place. <laughs> sure, Randy. Cats sure. are just weird. Uh, 50, he hey, enrolled Caleb. in a school under the GI Bill. Robinson found the young student, quote, a very hard worker who really uh, focused on his drawing. And someone who would work well with other writers as well as write his own stories and uh, create his own characters. He helped uh, Ditko acquire a scholarship for the uh, following year. He was invited... Uh, <clears throat> He was uh, in my class for two years, four or five days a week, five hours a night. It was very intense. Robinson, who invited artists and, and editors to speak with the class, once brought in Stan Lee, then editor of Marvel Comics in the 50s, precursor uh, Atlas Comics. I think it was Stan who, uh, that was when Stan first saw Steve's work. Ditko began professionally illustrating comics in the early eight, early 53. Right. Yep. Drawing writer Bruce Hamilton's science fiction story, Stretching Things, mm. for the uh, go for the key publications. Mm -hmm. uh, imprint Stanmore Publications, which sold the story to Ajax Farrell, where it finally found publication in Fantastic Fears number five. That was cover dated February of 54. Ditko's first published work was his second professional story, the six-page suit paper romance and daring love number one, published by the key imprint Gilmore magazine. Shortly after that, he worked with Simon and Kirby and then went to work at, uh, at Marvel. Anyway. Anything his, on his, uh, Captain 3D? No. Which I is that like was, his third work. Quite extensive. See, so Ditko is. Kirby had created Captain America and many characters. Ditko working with uh, learning from Mort Meskin, an artist whose work he had long admired. Meskin was fabulous. Ditko once recalled, uh, Ditko penciled a six page, a hole in the head for Black Magic, volume four, number three, published by Simon and Kirby's. Crestwood Publications imprint prize comics. Ditko then began a long association with the Derby Connecticut publisher Charlton Comics. Went to work Charles over there. Santos says Cubert uh, first Ditko influenced by. Yeah. Katie wow. says, "What is this? You're you're streaming over me." Oh no. <laughs> Are we streaming over Katie? What? Yeah, she's probably pining her dragon. Uh-oh. Caleb, call up that chick. Perfect timing. Mm -hmm. Sis, don't mean to be bothering you. We're here every Friday morning at 5 a.m. Uh, Katie? Ditko's known assistant work includes aiding Inker Meskin on the Jack Kirby pencil work for Harvey Comics' Captain 3D. Katie says, mine's been up for 11. Been set up for 11. Oh, we'll be out of here by 11, Katie. Pearl divers, folks. Look at that, Joe Kubert. Great for him. And a monkey. And so by this time, he's probably doing, been doing comics for... Probably a good decade. Over a decade, yeah. Gilbert, yeah. Yeah. A lot of Hawkman under his belt. Well, he first did Vol Voltron. 
Yeah. I Voltron? Think. Mm-hmm. A or robot? It, it's called Volton. Volton or something like that. Volton. Yeah. yeah. Caleb says, Jolly, Jolly, I got uh, no time for funny business. Says, With the name like Jolly. Day. Take care, Caleb. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I yeah. have it right here if you want to look at it. A reprint of it? Of what? This is Joe Kubert's first work. Volton, the human generator. I can blow you up here. Fancy. Is that what you got? Yeah, yeah. Oh, here we are. Look at he that. Was, it was published in Catman. Yeah. You know, it was like a backup feature. Uh, reprinting the, the very first published comic ever. book st stories of Joe Kubert. Full color. It's just like a little. And I have that's a couple that, of. That's not Kubert's first work, is it? Mm -hmm. was, was it okay cool yeah. and here's a couple of dickos that's yeah, yeah. British. <laughs> so Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> wow uh, those are british reprints of the charlton material yeah allen class yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. 15 pence and 20 pence there you is are. that a lot but yeah that's his first stuff just happened to have that handy Wang O found a pearl. Nice. Uh, on his signature, did he use a block signature and sign it Kirby? I mean, uh, Kubert with Kubert. a block signature. Right oh, okay. Because yeah. his his signature went through, di di uh, you know, three or four different iterations mm -hmm. over time. Nice white paintwork here. <coughs> nice Charles says Kubert's first known professional job was penciling and inking the six-page story Blackout, starring the character Volton. Yeah, there we are. For Holy Oak, publishing yeah. Catman Comics number eight, March nineteen forty-two. If if Ditko didn't ink this story, then. Jill Kubert drew all those Spider-Man episodes under the name Ditko. This is the way Kubert's stuff looked back during that period. His tour work is very close to it, this. It it does look like it uh, really Ditko. does, though. It yeah, it does. It looks a lot like Ditko stuff. I could sure I does. could look it up, and it, surely it would, uh, you know, give an anchor for it. They would have made some mention of. Uh, him apprenticing, I would think, in the Wikipedia under Joe Kubert, because Kubert's that big of a uh, artist. What issues this? Two Fist and Tails, what? 33. Okay. I'll see if I, I can find one on eBay. And I know that's but the right number. 1951. <laughs> Very. Um... 33 from 1953. It's cover dated uh, July, August. 1953. Oh, I was looking at the wrong one. Sorry. 1953, yep. It's got the same type of brushwork that uh, Bitco would use. You know, I had a I had an original of uh, from a Charlton book, Congo, uh, which is a large ape. I had an original for many years and I would take it around to folks uh, in the know, more knowledge of that period than me. And they would always argue about whether it was Kubert or Ditko. I'm real sorry. I, I let that page go too, because it was really, it was oversized and had a great face on it. It's just really great stuff. Had a dinosaur leaning over as a set of eggs. This particular uh, issue has a uh, oh. classic atom bomb story. Uh, Charles says Ditko imitated Kubert to start. No Ditko on Kubert ever. Yeah, says, please uh, excuse my shouty caps. Yeah, I don't <laughs> see. I use shouty caps too. Um, it says Bill Elder and Joe Kubert art kind of 
puts but then it That's you know it's it, Jack Davis, John Severin, Bill Elder, and Joe Kubert, Wally Wood cover and art, yeah, with Har Harvey Kreutzman and 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 Jerry. Could be Severin and and Elder story. on the uh, on the Severin story. They they used to get paired together quite a bit. Who who was Severin and Elder? Hmm. I don't I don't see any credit on the uh, Foreign Legion story, but there is a uh, it's definitely at least Severn. You can tell that. Might be Elder Zinks on it. That's a that's yeah. kind of amazing, you know. I mean, as long as Kubert and Dicko were in comics that they never brushwork. never did one small six page story or something together. Well, Charles says he was very influenced by him, so it's pretty obvious here from the brushwork. Kubert ends up changing his style as he gets older into yeah. the recognizable brushwork that uh, you know he did Tarzan and tour with. I was taking a look at that through those tour books that I got, and. Uh... It's just so uh, organic. Yeah. yeah. Some pretty crazy stuff there. Mm. Most of it's silent, too, so real mm. easy to uh, sell worldwide. Some more great pages. Look at that shark. It's cool. Coming at the diver here. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Uh, the under, underlit shark. Yeah. Bum, it's bum, gorgeous bum, work bum, here. Bum, bum. Charles again says Ron Goulart dismissed Ditko as a Kubert ripoff artist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. It's Ron. Anyway, everybody has their opinion. That's pretty harsh assessment, if you ask That me. is. That's that's a way harsh assessment. Considering their styles are so different. It's nice, nice monkey again. It's a great heroic look here. Quite a large bill on that cap, though. Nice story. The peeping shark here. Uh, maybe it's after my hand. Ooh. <laughs> Trying to duck out of sight and get pulled back up to the boat. Really good color right there. Looking much looking looking like it. You never know. He might have ghosted some of this. You never know. Though Charles says there was no Ditko on Kubert ever. Now here's another pretty iconic story by uh, Wally Wood. Adam Baum. Great panel that getting right to the point of the title. Yeah, some great uh, shadow work at at work here. It's fantastic. Great use of dual shade board back behind here, just to drop the background back. <coughs> nice stuff. <laughs> Looks especially pretty in black and white. Did you say these were in color to start with? These were published oh, yeah. in color. Yeah, they were published in color originally. Right. A lot better in black and white. Don't they? I'm not even seeing the color. Some of Charles. this stuff is just, just pops in black and white. Charles says, check your DM, Randy. Hey, Dark. Uh, right. Oh, there we are. Is that from your collection, Charles? That's amazing. That's great. 
you got to see this. Let me blow it up here. You see that? Probably can't, but uh, I can blow it up more. I can see it, yeah. Is that original art? It sure is. Oh, God. Charles, is this from your collection? Let us know in the chat. Look at that. Beautiful stuff. Frog legs. If, a little sign here. If there's if there's no Ditko on that, then I everything I've said on these podcasts, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> on that page. Just because you know Ditko. Just yeah. because it's just because it says it in Wikipedia or somebody got a piece of artwork doesn't mean they're right. Yeah. Glenn's going to die on that hill. <laughs> Absolutely. Look at this brushwork on the profile here in the uh, far left what panel. You mean, Glenn. Just amazing. I really do. Yeah. That's got Ditko on it. I'm not saying he drew it. I'm not saying he did all the ink, but it, there's a lot of Ditko on that. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah. <laughs> Charles says, not mine. I wish. Charles is Dark, uh, yelling, no, Ditko. <laughs> No, Dark like in 81 in the house says no Ditko. Yeah. <laughs> Fun fact there was supposed to be a two fisted tail spinoff on Fox. Yeah. Yeah, they got really close. Back huh. when HBO was running Tales from the Crypt, they were looking at a lot of that EC material. Because it's all the, the stories are just that good and easily translatable into a uh, uh screen. This profile here, though, the one on the far left, really looks like Steve Canyon. It looks like um, Milt Kniff inking, just so the, the way it looks. Some great, great stuff here. I want to know who lettered it. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's not your uh, template lettering that you normally no. see, is it? No. no. Very well done. Beautiful work. Try our turtle soup. Yeah. Great stuff. Thanks, Charles. Thanks for finding that. On to the atom bomb. More phenomenal wood here. Giggity. Look at that. This is crazy stuff. Oh, like Wally out. did. Wally Wood did work for uh, was it Playboy or Penthouse? Those, yes. Those. Uh, the, Both. Probably. That right Go ahead, Russ. Page, yeah. That right hand page. Top panel. Top right hand panel. Right hand panel. That one. And the one under mm -hmm. it, and the one to the left of that. Yeah. Just look at those negative spaces. Just this. <laughs> this whole page is a masterclass in yeah. inking and uh, and tone here. Yeah. Fantastic. Just beautiful stuff. This looks like almost um, EC version of I saw it. Uh, it's a classic manga that uh, mm. from uh, Nagasaki bombing survivor. Do you know it's it wouldn't surprise me piece of work. that Wally Wood didn't do this lettering on this strip because no, he I does think, a lot. He does a lot yeah. of lettering on other stuff. Yeah, it wouldn't I surprise did. me if it was him. As you know, why look at this? This balloon here is dropped from the upper ridge of the panel. That's when they use that template. Everything was crowded up, up to the yeah. top. Yeah, so you're probably right. A lot of dialogue. Here, here as well. Oh, there's yeah. a lot of dialogue during this time anyway. A lot of captions. Not quite as wordy as the 70s comics. Some of the 70s comics were so wordy they had a whole page of, of prose. Some of the 40s comics could get wordy too. Yeah get the archives and read that stuff it's like golly just exposition the whole <laughs> it gets tiresome to me timothy said it didn't happen so they just made it into a tales from the crypt episode yeah yeah 
classic uh, hand lettering Mighty Geek says. Absolutely. Hey, Mighty Geek. Adam, Adam Baum is one of the greatest comic book stories ever published. Yep. Letters Ben Oda. Okay. It's a lettering. Good. Okay. Yeah. Lovely stuff. It is. Just a great, great uh, piece, you know, in general. The way that, like Russ was saying about that panel there, where 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 the, where the bomb obviously goes off, the one above it, the one the one to the right above it, yeah, the the, the initial blast, and then the then the turmoil, you know, with with the yeah. sorry the initial light and then the blast hitting everything, mm -hmm. that's incredible. It's devastating. And she's saying, "I must get the sewing machine." It's, that's what's on her mind. It's so important. And then boom. There's the wow. sewing machine here in front. Slightly darker zip tone here. Yeah. It's, it's fantastic. It is. It's an incredible work. Nice shading work there on that face. Double lighting. Look at that. Bam! Through that doorway with that kid. Look at that. Boom. Yeah. Jeez. Look at that. What's that? Boom. Mm. I hope you're taking notes for your war book. Yeah. No nuclear bombs in it, though. Yeah. Nuclear. This looks like it's all zip screen here. Maybe a little wash. No, that's dual shade board working here. Let's look at that. It's, uh, impression of detail wow. here. It's a different. Uh, it's a different pattern. Uh, dual shade board, kind of a grainy look to it. When did uh, the screens and all that stuff come in? Was it the 40s? Uh, when was it first used? Back when newspapers uh, never printed, printed color. So they broke it up by cross hatching and then they created Zipatone and Dual Shade Board for the uh, editorial okay. cartoons. Yeah. Gosh, so it would go way back, way, way back? Probably late 30s, I would imagine. Maybe late 20s. Okay. They so started putting color in in the 30s, late 30s. And I could be wrong on the exact date there. This is Ben Oda uh, on the Kubert and the Wood. Yeah, cool. Wartime stories were better depicted in comic books. Yeah. Well, they knew they were read by a lot of... Uh, current and former GIs. So that's the big thing with the EC comics is they caught that um, wave of uh, enlisted men coming back from the war who were still uh, too poor and right before television caught on. A lot of these comics sold like uh, the EC line and Crime Does Not Pay. And there was a number of adult-oriented comics back during that period. That's why the comic code was started they were they were selling millions of copies at that point of uh um those adult oriented comics had his father passed away or did his father get to see his son's success at the running of line no, his dad sold all of his stock in national periodicals, making him incredibly rich, and he ended up dying in a boating accident. Was it 1948 he died, didn't he? Uh, right around there, yeah. Yeah, and uh, his son inherited everything. And he kept uh, picture stories from the Bible running out of, uh, you know, from his dad and slowly changed EC from educational comics. Well, it was already starting to be entertaining comics 
at that point he was starting to dabble with a couple of titles, but he really uh, blew the doors off with it with uh, Weird Science and uh, Tales from the Crypt. It's horror horror line. I got a Charles sent a, a Superman cover here. Let me share that. That's kind of cool. Actually, it's quite cool. Blow that up. Lois Lane Whack. KP is a pleasure with Superman substituting for me. Hey there. <laughs> Potato. And then uh, her, uh, her, her officer looking in the doorway all uh, a little upset. Looks like the same person. Yeah. Same hairdo. Who's that? Mort that, uh, uh, Kurt Swan. Kurt Swan. Mort, Mort Weisinger, I was going to say. Oh, yeah, okay. that's, what, might be Swan. It's Weisinger. <laughs> Mort. Morty Mort. With all the plates piled up like you wouldn't. <laughs> what, 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 what? Anyway. Back to wood. Aftermath. More great. It's a baton work here. The cloud. Duo shade back here. Painted, painted in zip screen here. Beautiful work. What? Why has he died? The guy is he? It's a bit blurred. I can't read it. Is it? He's. Why does he? Is he in the blast? Uh, perhaps I should not have sent a letter to 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 Shio, but I did. I wonder. If he ever received it, he did receive it, then he knows all. Hey, sure, what is that? Uh, it must be a good a letter. Camp? Yeah, I think so, too. I think he just died camp. from being in the camp, I don't know. Right. Siberian slave camp. I'll make us all sick in no time. This man is dead. S Siberian slave camp has a completely different meaning in 2024 on the internet. <laughs> it's almost <laughs> just, yeah. Is that anything like a Dutch oven? Anyway. <laughs> it's almost as Darn if he just ran. gave up the will to live. Yeah. Still wonders if he received the letter. He would be glad to see how things are growing all over Nagasaki. It'd do his heart good to see how the new buildings are springing up all over Nagasaki. And it would make him glad to see his youngest, Kuni, K-U-N-I, still alive. Rish Deshiro in Nagasaki knew it's just me, the grandmother, and Kuni, the grandson. Hi there, Kuni. That last panel on the right hand side. That, yeah. I don't know. That's got a manga feel to it. Look at the kid. Yeah, it does. He's up in the air. Look at the clouds. Yeah. That's uh it makes you wonder if he's, you know, gone and looked. But you wonder if if everything there's no gravity, the dog's off the floor, the kids yeah. off the floor. When, when did when yeah. did manga first start? I mean, how old is manga? After World War Two. It really so, sprung up. Yeah. So this would have so he he could well have been looking at that stuff when he yeah, very possible yeah because yeah. there's some there is something manga esque about it. Mm -hmm. In August 19, 1945, the A bomb killed twenty nine thousand seven hundred ninety three people and destroyed eighteen thousand 
409 homes, but hope was not destroyed in Nagasaki, and life nurtured by hope blooms again. Plants, buildings, children grow in Nagasaki, for there is hope in Nagasaki. There is hope in the whole world. Mm. It's probably before they had to deal, deal with all the radiation poison. Yeah. yeah. That's not quite how I saw it ends. So. So just. Uh, I saw it. Being the early '80s account of the Hiroshima bombing, yeah, by a, one of the survivors. Yeah, Charles says, and then Godzilla came. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yep. is that not bad enough? Now we've got a a quarter mile high monster stomping around the city. <laughs> that's what DC. Oh, that Superman was a sample of what DC was publishing at that point at that time. Yeah, newspaper strips could get away with a lot of story, a lot story-wise. Mighty Geek says, also you could learn mm. civics reading Dick Tracy. Yep, and all the different ways that vil uh, that uh, criminals could die too. Yeah, yeah. And then Godzilla came. Says the Phantom encountered the Nazis and Japanese uh, soldiers during World War II. Yeah, mm. all of those comic strip guys did. That's the end of 33 on to Two Fisted Tales 34 with a great Jack Davis cover. Look at that. Just fantastic stuff here. Nice tracer bullets at the top there. <laughs> Love that plane. What it a craftsman. Look, it looks good, even though the coloring's. Off, off register. Yeah, pretty. Uh, yeah, just a little. Yeah, I don't know if that was intentional or not. Didn't have to be at this point. Oh, a lot right. of dots, dots back here too. Dot pattern that didn't need to be there. That might be intentional because uh, the book might have been printed off like that. First story, Betsy. Leading off, that's Jack Davis. Yeah. Left there. That's how you draw a horse. That that stuff on the left there. Um, yeah, Hollywood that cover. That yeah, top Hollywood. left hand. That that reminds <laughs> me. I know. I know. It's a it's a fair way off, but there's something reminiscent of Kevin O'Neill about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The way, that, arms, yeah. The way that the tone is being used. Yeah. The way that's being shaded and the ridiculous um, muscular mu musculature as well. It's just yeah. And the com comedy about it, that's just, uh, yeah, you can see you must have been looking. We need to go through and look at that early mad material because some of it's pretty, pretty crazy. Look at I think we, we looked at we looked at it slightingly before, but uh, I really know, take a yeah. closer look at it. Yeah. Look at that. C mad, by mad, B mad. <laughs> B mad. <laughs> That horse is today. Tough, yeah, I reckon Kevin O'Neill was actually reading that advert. When yeah. he, when he created um uh the uh uh what was it the one the alien one the um alien uh um witches and stuff like that nemesis nemesis that's the, the one two thousand yeah because you think because one of the things he said in it was uh was it be be uh be good be aware be um behave that was it yeah so be, yeah, yeah be good be, be yeah. aware behave but yeah and behave and that just that's you could imagine that he's sitting there reading that and looking at that art going oh yeah <laughs> that's <laughs> probably exactly pat mills it. that that came up with that yeah, yeah. pat, pat yeah. mills as well yeah so just yeah you can see how inspirational this stuff has always been do you know what this really reminds me of though is captain stern by bernie wrightson out of uh heavy metal Oh, it looks yeah. almost exactly like it. Yeah, it reminds me of that guy in the film. What's it called? The The Incredibles. That yeah, it yeah. Does a bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. I'm still, I'm still absolutely um, besotted with this horse on the right hand side. Here. I know. It's, I mean, it's, it, there's it's, motion and it's falling over. It looks like it's, it's just it's bonkers. 
so it's leaning into the run it's just cracking and then the way that old fella's laying on the floor yeah just really oh everybody really at the height of their abilities here oh look at the ink look at all that ink <laughs> It's a little bit of zip work here on the shirt just to drop and, it. And that smoke going above in, in front of him, is that smoke? That right panel? There. Yeah, that sort of line of smoke in front of him. It's got a hole in him, it looks like. No, no, be below your finger now. Oh, There's yeah, like I can a, see, I can, yeah, is I can that see like white zipper tone or something across his shirt? And, and oh, no, panel. that's here. Oh, yeah, I yeah. see it. Yeah. 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 That's, well, a, that's a little bit of white zip, yeah. Yeah, genius. Yeah, it's, it's the smoke in the, in <laughs> white, the bar, yeah. isn't it? So there's mm -hmm. a smoke across his but That's just genius. That's just. I brilliant. thought that was a reflection off of his shirt, yeah. but no, you're right. It's yeah. smoke. You can see it better at, at yeah. a distance than I, I can here up close. Just, and all the fabric as well, where he's guy, taking that guy over the bar and the fabric on their shirts. Yeah. It's just, ah. Oh. All the bottles. Glug, glug takes his face and smashes it into the bar and kicks him in the ass. Then we've got that, the bottom of the shoe again. Who's the artist on this? Jack, Jack Davis. Davis. This is Jack Davis? Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's, wow. It shows you could do serious, doesn't it? Come on. Look at that. <laughs> Smacking that guy's face into the bar. Dude. Yeah. Hey. Smack. Whack. Yeah. Again, you could imagine, um, although very very different in styles look at what um people like Buscema were doing mm -hmm. um and i'm talking about the characterization that they produced so you look at those first three panels on the left hand page and you've you've got that sort of handsome-ish sort of cowboy and then you've got the old fella there look how he's lengthened his face he's put a massive nose on him it's just the character involved in that face is yeah. incredible it's beautiful yep and you see that in a lot of Buscema work, don't you? Like where he, where he does, you know, old people and demons and witches and stuff, and all the the character in in their faces. Yeah, yeah. Buscema tends to when he's drawing, especially women. He, he, there's no line at all, is there? No. They, and then when he when he draws yeah. a bad guy, there's every line on it. Every line, yeah, yeah. So I know what you mean, yeah. And he does it's, it so well. And I, what a great way to show somebody who's good looking though, with no line work on them. Yeah. Yeah, like, like no, he does no, with Conan. Yeah, yeah, ex exactly. There's there's very little going on on a Conan face. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but when he meets the demon or whoever it is, the really some work gone in there. Yeah, yeah. That the ink on that is the the blacks are just incredible, aren't they? It's, like you say, it, when he's pulling when he's pulling him across yeah, the bottom yes. the, about the bottom there. It's just That's wonderful, amazing. wonderful work. It's walking in the doors here. That's great lighting. And it's very cinematic. Like he, he comes in menacing, he grabs the guy, then he whacks him. And then the next, then he goes over to the other guy with his hand on his head and then smacks it in the death in the bar and boots him. Yeah. Really flows. It's really, really well done. I'm taking over this town and have myself a new trial. You all singing a different tune. <laughs> Yeehaw. Yeah. <laughs> Mighty Geek says two fisted tales couldn't be published today because it would be considered misogynist. And not only that, you're seeing that pendulum swing back, though. Yeah. No. That's what he said. I, th I think it would have uh, more problems than that. Not that I agree with, obviously, <laughs> I don't. Um, but there would be people complaining about the violence and all kinds of stuff. And it's like, yeah, probably, yeah. Get stuffed. Buy it, don't buy it. It's up to you. Look at those eyes at the bottom there on that panel. Yeah. That great? Yeah. Crazy eyes. That's fantastic. Yeah. This, this panel. What yeah. action. Look at that smack. That's the girl smacking him with a... A, a pint pot. <laughs> yeah, pint pot. Yeah. Have that. You want Filthy a drink? little witch. Exactly. 
Look at that. Look at the look at the detail on that panel where he's kissing her or whatever he's doing to her. Look at the yeah, detail. His look at yeah. his hand. Yeah. Right. And, his, and, his, and his face, yeah. his chin, his, the cheekbone and everything, his ear. He's got, he's got those yeah. three lines on the back of his throat. Mm. Yeah. Cheekbone. Wow. Cheekbone. All right. Who's the next? And the hair. Sam Skeeter. It's got some fight in him. Come step up. I'll kill him. Yeah. We'll determine then. Then the sheriff arrives. You gotta learn to fight my style. It ain't fair. It looks like um, that sheriff looks like what's he called? Sergeant York. What was he called? The actor. Who? Sergeant York? Was that Jack Lemon? No. Um, oh. Gary Cooper. Gary Cooper. Oh, yeah, yeah. Almost injury to eye motif. Yeah. High noon. Yeah. The art and dialogue are fantastic. Just what every boy wants to read. Yep. They need to remake Sergeant York badly. Why? Yeah, exactly. If you've ever read the autobiography, the movie's nothing like the real story, oh. which is even more dramatic. Tone down for the cinema audience? Yeah. Um... Well, I mean, it's not exactly accurate. Okay. And okay. really, the true story even makes him into more of a hero, I think. At, at one point, he's got, he's caught in a crossfire. Yeah. You know, because he he's taking on German troops so quickly, he doesn't, he hasn't had time to disarm this German lieutenant who's down on the ground, but he still has his Luger and he's firing from behind while the others are firing at him in front of it. So he's caught in a crossfire. So it's just very dramatic. It's a couple pages here. Never great, hit. great, great action bar, bar fight action. Yeah. York was never hit. Yeah. You know, Jack Rex. Davis, all those great bronze age, in early eighties ads. Yeah. That were in comics. Yep. Ain't nobody as good as me. I think he's about to get his come up. It's what do you think? <laughs> Gonna say somebody needs to shoot him. The old geezer got him. Yeah. It's a long, long panel here. Separated yeah. by the back of his head. Good old Betsy. Nice Betsy. Good old Betsy. Lamb. You don't have to be fast, just accurate. Oh, he was talking about yeah. Betsy at the beginning, wasn't he? It's the name of the story, yeah. But he, the, when he's lying on the ground, he says, Gotta see, gotta get Betsy or something. Mm -hmm. and that's what he meant. <laughs> we think it's his girl, and it's obviously his rifle. It's another classic wood story here. Trial by arms. Yeah, look at the way he's left, left the left the white horse open. Yeah. Fantastic, isn't it? Probably helped him get that Prince Valiant gig for a little while. Yeah. I love this. Sir Nigel, Duke of... Not which that probably took him a few hours. Yeah, I just did it in three minutes. Yeah, beautiful. Though. I'd love to see some Jack Davis pencils. Yeah, just to That's see pretty close. 
yeah and the, the same with all these artists on these strips they, they're inking as well so you can leave things out can't you because you can just mm -hmm. because, you, because you're doing the full work you can leave it out in pencil and just put it in with the ink so I, right. but i just i would just love to see jack davis that, that i'd love to see that page in pencil of jack davis on the left there mm -hmm. just to see what he was doing you know yeah, yeah. yeah. fantastic I, I have to say over the last what how long have we been doing this 18 months yeah about that it, yeah it's had a it's had a profound effect on the way that i approach my art just going yeah. through all these pages Oh going yeah! Through all the stuff that we go through, seeing the techniques, seeing the way it's been approached, and it, mm -hmm. it really has made a difference to the cool. to, to how I, to, even down to my uh, process, it's made a difference. Because you you just see stuff and you just think, how, how do they do that? And and then there's other stuff that you look at and you go, oh, it, you know, it enlightens you. You, you see, mm -hmm. maybe where you're t as an artist, you've tightened up. And you shouldn't be tightening up. You should be letting it flow, you know? Yeah. And uh, and even though you look at this and you, you can see it's really, really tight inks, if this was blown up to the right size, you'd see the imperfections in the lines and, you know, the, the ink work and all the rest of it. And, uh, I mean, just, just down to looking at the hair on the back of his head on those top two panels, you can see it's just been flicked in. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not thought too much about it. It's just gone, mm -hmm. there's this, on the, oh, yeah, on the bottom on his neck. I'm just going to yeah. flick that hair in, yeah. And yeah. it's that, it's that approach of being confident about your work and what have you, and and looking at this, even though so much of this is incredibly um, uh, humbling because it all it's all just such fantastic work and an amazing mm -hmm. benchmark to look at. It it inspires you to think about the way that you produce your own inks. Uh, it's just it's it's been it's been a bit of a journey it's really good yeah just before you turn the page you see that guy with who's the old guy who just shot that guy mm -hmm. if that happened if that really happened he'd now be arrested for possessing a firearm and murdering somebody <laughs> instead of everybody just going cheers yeah <laughs> yeah cheers we'll we'll bury him out back yeah just stick him in no the... one needs to know about this yeah <laughs> Ready? I'm sure this is going to be great. Prince Valiant right there. Yeah. Definitely. Look at that. This nice all big dual bowl shape. for that haircut. Back here, very little line work in the background. All dual shape. Is, is that green? duo tone? I don't like that. Yeah, is it's that what it is? Yeah. Yeah, it's painted in. You can tell from the varying... Uh, shades that you have here yeah right here you didn't put all of the chemical along the bottom there where that two is over here too there's a little bit of it this is zip a tone here and here just to drop it back so you bring those characters forward very prince valiant which was really big popular at the time look at that hair it's great Brushwork, thin brushwork. That guy with the with the big beard next to that guy looks like him in um, the whole Holy Grail Indiana yeah. Jones thing. <laughs> Charles yeah. sent it. Charles says uh, C Wood in DMs. I got a message like that the other day on Facebook, and I blocked them. <laughs> <laughs> so let me pull that up here. Yeah, they really do owe a lot to oh, yeah. the newspaper strips, don't they? Yeah. That's what Charles sent here. Let me pull this in. Here's the Prince Valiant. Wow. Although that oh, that those steps that looks familiar. like Yeah. <laughs> See it, see at the bottom there when it says next week the divorce that looks like Wally Wood's um, yeah. signature lettering style. Yeah, yeah. It does that panel there with the steps. Now go back to the other one. Go back to our two fisted tails. There's a panel there with the steps. I can't mm -hmm. see it. it's all gone 
Very no blurry. That one mm-hmm. with your finger on now, right bottom right hand panel. Yeah. yeah. It's very similar. Just jarred straight away. Wow. There we go. It's coming in. I'm blind. That camera. Yes. Yeah. Very similar, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, oh, it, it must be complete coincidence. It's just funny that it came up like that. Yeah. Prince Violent. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I didn't even see that was a uh, parody strip. That's funny. I thought that was an actual Prince Valiant strip. <laughs> Written and illustrated by Flower E. Foster. Yeah. <laughs> yep. When the message from home arrives, Prince Violent reads it slowly with a sad heart and misfilled eyes. Oletta, he whispers softly, Oletta, my own true love, and the fearless warrior is suddenly a helpless boy, full of loneliness and longing. He makes his decision. I'm going I'm going home. <laughs> For a parody <laughs> strip, it's extremely well drawn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like Foster's works, what it yeah. looks like, especially that panel with Look the ship. That. Yeah. yeah. Just great stuff. I guess he's about to get uh, violent. <laughs> As he pushes aside the curtain, Voyle knows what an idiot he has been to think so. Yeah. Caught her in the act. Pull up the next one here. Oh, this is his actual Valiant work. Yeah. Woods, yeah. It's, it's obviously wood here. Look at that Busem, hair. Busem has been looking at this. Look at that's the typical yeah. every, posey, that guy sitting down. Every kid looked at this when that when it was out. It was this was a huge strip at for its time. Prince didn't, Valiant. Look at that. Didn't Busem Look at that girl. Actually, yeah, didn't Busem actually cite Prince Valiant? Uh, he, in an interview. I'm sure he did. Yeah. Yeah. So that that girl is beautiful, just fantastic. Yeah, she says that she's more gay than ever. <laughs> Alita. Lolita. Alita. A L E T A. Yeah. Not Lolita. That's a whole different property. She appears every <laughs> afternoon in the palace and she's more gay than ever. <laughs> Sounds like Lolita Great. to me. <laughs> Whole different meaning back then. Yeah. Yeah. You're very handsome, but I'm gay. Yep. <laughs> That's like what a great so page. Right. Thanks for sharing, Charles. Appreciate it. Yeah. That's great, isn't it? There we are. And back. We don't have uh, much time. We're in our last half hour here. Look at that. Boom. There's a nine-panel grid for you. Hmm. It's all out of focus for me, though. Is it? Damn it. Yeah, I can't see anything. Don't complain, Glenn. Oh, I hate this. I'll complain as long as I can need to complain. You Is that better? Complain as long as point. I can breathe. If I can't see it, Rex, there's not much <laughs> point being here, is there? <laughs> While I'm still breathing, I'm going to complain. Yeah. Shut up. Just because I complain doesn't mean I'm wrong. So be quiet. <laughs> be quiet and learn yeah. how to complain properly. Oh, I <laughs> exactly. How to complain properly. <laughs> now it's really blurred. Tune in again next Friday. Same bat place, same plat- bat time for four old men arguing with each other. Is that better? That that's looks great. better here. That's yeah, great. that's good. That's good. Yeah. Your camera's weird that it does that. That's... It is. It's got an autofocus on it that drives me crazy. Yeah. Prince Prince Violent. King Melvin. Yeah. Melvin. Melvin was a funny name back then. No, it's still a funny name. Um yeah. no background on those. That's yeah, not, no backgrounds, yeah. yeah. Focusing yeah. on the fighting. Yeah. It reminds me of that um Kirby Cat Batrock page. Exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing. Looks a lot like it.
that's a fight story in one page. Great dialogue. <laughs> His head looks a bit large on the last panel, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Whack. Then he's got all of this brushwork work in here, just gorgeous. I mean, yeah. face next to it. Beautiful. Looks like that profile looks like Thor in the center panel. Yeah. Right has triumphed. A bit of dual shade work here, dual tone painting. Do you know what I don't like on these strips? I've noticed is the heavy borders on the panels. Yeah, they're yeah. Really heavy, aren't they? I don't like that. Yeah, they are. Um, a little thick. Yeah, but it, it's on the mall, so it must be sort of an editorial thing. I would have thought. Well, they got these pages lettered, blank and lettered with a script. Yeah. So, those borders were already there. They just chucked them in, and they had to draw inside them. Yeah. Rose piece. Who's next? John Severin. John Severin. Yeah, good guess, right? Yeah. JP Severin. Yeah. Of Diable. Is that crop, crop of dying? Look at that. He's got a Frank Robbins bent back leg here working. <laughs> yeah. Just beautiful, and and these these comics, I mean, are are ultra valuable. Yeah. You well, know, resale now. mainly mainly because of all of the comic burnings back in the uh, mid fifties. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, because you said they were selling in the millions. Millions, yes. Yeah. But they're very very hard to find. I was at a show a couple of years ago, and a guy had an entire back uh, uh shelf on his back wall was nothing but ec comics i was like stunned holy crap i've never seen so many ecs in one place before just great great set of books bought somebody's collection out great severin here the guy's face here just sweet scared to death Another French Foreign Legion story. This is all line work back behind. This is all. Uh, he does a lot of close in work, doesn't he? Yeah. I think he needs to pull that camera out a bit. They yeah, actually have it. some lower grade ones on, on eBay that I was quite stunned that. I mean, twenty dollars, thirty-five dollars. I mean, they're those must grade. be inc they must be incredibly ratted, probably. I guess just beyond, yeah, barely holding themselves together for that price. Yeah, yeah. I got some comments on that. EC in any shape, though, is uh, yeah. rare and worth worth something. That's probably 20 bucks is probably undervalued for that, depending upon what issue it is. Yeah, it's number 33, what we looked at. Oh, yeah, way, way undervalued. It's number you get 28, that $35. And... Wow. Number 19, $55. Here's one, 41 for $25. Hmm. Very good. Maybe. Maybe the collectability on this stuff's like big little books. The, the older the um the older it is the less collectability there is with it because there's so few people that remember this stuff now because mm -hmm. i watch the values on big little books rise and fall uh, you know immensely over the last 10 20 years flash gordon big little books you couldn't find for 250 350 bucks are now 10 15 dollars because nobody nobody knows what it is. Wow. Nobody collects nobody collects big little books that much anymore. 
there are bargains in EC war books. Not, but not horror or sci-fi. Yeah. Okay, Charles. That would make sense too. Love big little books. Uh, Walter Koenig that played Chekhov. Uh, he he mm-hmm. had a big collection of big little books. Did he really? That's cool. Yeah, he had Joe Palooka wow. one through fifty. Hmm. Uh, he had a big pin back collection of buttons, uh-huh. like political buttons and other type yeah, of yeah. buttons, comic buttons. Sweet. He was a big collector. He collected uh, only the Chekhov uh, action figures. <laughs> None of the other Star Trek stuff. Uh, but he had yeah. a lot of books about nuclear vessels as well. Vessels. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I see what you did there, Russ. <laughs> Darn British humor. <laughs> We're here to confuse. More, more Titillate and breaker. confound. Look at the light sourcing here off of this torch back behind it. It's cool. Yeah. Still want to get through one more story, and it's about uh, 45 past the hour. We're going to end on a great one, folks. Some more great brushwork here. Look at that feathering. Just phenomenal stuff. George Evans. This is what he was known for, was his biplane stories. Look at that. Love the old biplanes, World War One. Mm-hmm. I love that. Look, look at the way he spotted those blacks on here. That. Big, yeah, just yeah. And the wings and yep, yeah, that's uh, that's gorgeous. It's beautiful stuff. Little clouds in the background, not much. Don't need enough. Don't don't need much. Just a few lines. Equal clouds. Yeah, I love equal clouds. Just a great progression here. What a great page. Hmm. He wrecked that. He certainly did. Mow him down. Broke it up like it was balsa wood. Yeah. It was boss of wood and canvas, wasn't it? Yeah. George's guy, guy Nimmer, walked away with but a scratch on his knee to show for his trouble. Miraculous. But uh, there was more, much more to come. Look at that crowd. Yeah, I guess the it, it, Charles says there are bargains in EC war books, but not horror or sci-fi. Yeah, I guess it's yeah. pretty covered. Which is crazy because we, we've hit a period here in Two Fisted Tales that it's all just incredible prime artwork. Just incredible storytelling. Just everybody at the top of their game. And who's the artist on this story here? I love it. It's George Evans. Okay. Had a long, long career in comics. His, uh, I think his last work was an Enemy Ace uh, graphic novel. I could be oh, wrong, yeah. though. I think yeah. I have that, or did have it. Yeah. <laughs> Just I, I always be drew. of the archives. Yeah. Always drew beautiful stuff and always loved to draw biplanes. Yeah, I mean, uh, these... I, I, like Joe Kubert, they they were veterans. They they knew war. They had been mm-hmm. in war, or at least part of the war effort. You know, so they knew something about war and the machinery. And okay. I was just blown away by like Kubert's, you know, sixty stuff where they devote a page or two to the mechanics of things. Mm-hmm. Just incredible uh, how they brought it all to life for the reader. This love is later 
Kubert's later brushwork, his Tarzan works, just to me, it's just amazing. You can sit there and look mm -hmm. at it for a long time and still, you know, enjoy it and still pull things from it. I guess the EC being the focus, they really did probably focus mainly on EC books as far as burning was concerned. No, it wasn't just EC because a lot of the, uh, the little side companies started imitating EC and, and it was kind of a, uh, a, a magnification because the, the horror comics got incredibly horrific and then Gain said, oh, you want to see gore? I can show you gore. Yeah. And then the, the later horror comics are just incredibly gory, which really- well, I know like the, uh, Dale and Pine Comics, they would state on the comics, sometimes on the cover, like Pine Comics, you know, this is wholesome for your kids, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. You know, a yeah. little disclaimer. Well, another big thing that was going on during this period was crime comics. Crime does not pay and uh, crime and the law. There were um, Lev Gleason pretty much stopped yeah. doing superheroes. He was doing Daredevil and Silver Streak and that, and right. started doing, focusing on true crime comics. And they were right. selling four or five million every issue. Just crazy that's, numbers. That started in the 40s. Yeah. And that, you had your sharp eye to the eye, or the, the sharp needle to the eye motif. And that, that, oh, got, yeah. that got really violent. Just very, very, uh, very much into the domestic violence part of it also a major trigger for the uh code authority it's all thin line work here it's beautifully done i don't know if that was done with a thin brush or by a pen but it's it's just gorgeous looking here too look at that scenery or the land back there all in thin lines Knew, who, knew how to draw, that's for sure, especially biplanes. We're about uh, heading towards the top of the hour here. Oh, and that was it. Boom. Does he... Does he Say what? Does he die at the end? This guy, I can't work it out. Whether he scan the sky and the ground, Captain George's Gein Gein French ace, twenty-two years old, with uh, fifty-three victories to his credit, was nowhere to be seen, and this was the miracle. George's Gynamer and his spad were never again seen by human eyes it was as if the very heavens had swallowed him up i think he was already dead yeah, probably because a ghost could be next issue is another civil war issue with the great jack davis cover look at that yeah very iconic. To take her boy, keep the stars and bars of flapping. <laughs> Another bottom of the shoe there. Yeah. Great stuff. Good stuff. Lots more, lots more great good stuff to look at, folks. We'll uh, probably pick this up again next week. Right at this point, just to finish off this volume. Got a couple more issues, I think, to go. One or two. Okay. You know, one this volume. There's still another volume to come. So let's great carry stuff. on. It's good stuff. You're the man, we, Randy. We shall. We'll carry on next week with uh, Two Fisted Tales, number 35 and 36. We've been looking at Two Fisted Tales of Russ Cocker and Reprint volume, hardcovers, all uh, four volumes in a fantastic slipcase. 
um, unfortunately baked by the sun here. Who published that? They did, uh, Cochran did, Russ Cochran. Okay. And what year? Uh, rough. Uh, Nineteen eighty. Okay. Entire contents recopyright in nineteen eighty. Russ Cochran out of West Plains. What is that, Missouri or Montana? M O. That's Missouri, right? Pretty sure it is. Yeah. But yeah, shout out. Set it in the sun, Randy. I had it sitting in a in a foyer in a bookcase in the in oh, the slip really? cases. You really did. And, oh, oof. and this this spine was sitting out in the open, so that's why you've got the vibrant red here and the faded pink there. So, unfortunately, but this was something I wasn't ever going to sell anyway. So, such great stuff. I didn't realize it, how baked it was until I went to move them. I moved them down here into the basement. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, two I was fisted. A, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I was, just no. gonna say, I was at a convention and there was uh, this guy had all these uh, games, uh, not games, models in the boxes. He mm -hmm. had this fantastic array of Batman and all these things from really, really great collection. He had it all standing there. Uh, I took a photograph of it and he went absolutely berserk because he said the flash from my camera was going to spoil the printing on it. You know, one like quick flash. Yeah. 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 You know, like the sun does, like you've just mm -hmm. said. One and he just went absolute berserk. I just said, "What are no. you doing here?" I said, "What are you doing here?" You know, you know, put cover it up, put a put a blanket over it, then you know. Yeah, yeah. Why cool. bring them out into the open if you're worried that the yeah. light is going to fade them? Yeah, that's right. Yep, it's a shame. Nothing can save you from X rays. No, <laughs> treasures are rays. lost and found every day. I was at. Uh, I was in visiting Memphis one time and they had a, a child's children's book exhibit at the museum. And the only picture they had there intentionally under low light was the pencil drawing of Alice from Alice in Wonderland, where she's holding the flamingo, uh, the flamingo uh, cricket club and the, the neck and the flamingos draped down towards the floor. It's a very iconic picture if you if you know what i'm talking about but it was beautiful under low light yeah. under glass under low light it's just gorgeous so a lot of a lot of stuff that you i never expected to see i was down there just to to be there and there was a um like i said a children's book illustration exhibit going on so it's pretty crazy to see got to see some uh john r john r neal illustrations from uh one from Wizard of Oz, and or not Wizard of Oz, but one from his Oz books, and um, a plate that he did off of Treasure Island that was just gorgeous. Had a kid um, with a book in front of him, with him imagining a big pirate ship and Long John Silver in the background. It's great, just great illustration. Anyway, folks, Two Fisted Tales, we're really glad that you were able to stop by here. Hit that like button, hit that love button. Uh, there, at whatever platform you're on, <laughs> let us know. What well, you're laughing that, at, love button. Hit that love button. <laughs> hit that love button, folks. Hit love. that love button. Hit the love button. Hit the exactly. love. How dare you? Anyway, that was for Charles. Can you feel the love? <laughs> folks, we appreciate you being here. We do this every Friday morning at 5 a.m. Eastern time. We go through great, great sequential artwork like this because we love it why we do it so and we're really glad that you're here with us and able no. that we're able to share that with you uh, nothing else could get us up at four in the morning you want to see an old paper 1917 there we are rainbow oh i don't know 1917 that's in color april 28 well just the just the the front here Wow. The rest is black and white, except for the back, which is limited. Oh, that's amazing! Yeah. What other str what strips are in there? Oh, all this for nineteen seventeen. Uh, the Gumps, maybe Buster M Brown, Mrs. Uh, Bruns here on the B R U I N S. Uh, fluff, 
helps Peter and Pauline to get some dinner. What are the strips? Uh, the, the, oh, it's strips called inside. The, two, the two pickles. The, the two, two pickles. pickles on the back. Yeah. There we are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 1917, and it's still nice. And yeah. Editor's chat. I mean, you know, it's all black and white. That's great. Great yeah. stuff, though. Rex, tell folks how they can find you. Uh, they can find me on Instagram, on 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 uh, YouTube daily, uh, and find my project over on Phone My Comic under Devil Flyer. Um, <clears throat> on uh, X under Devil Flyer. I'm around. Okay. He's around. Russ, yeah. are you around? Yes, you are. There you are. Yeah, Russ, tell I'm folks here. how they can yeah. find you. I, I would uh, I would argue that there is a, another reason for getting up at four in the morning. It's got something to do with being over 50 years old and having a hot drink before you go to sleep. Um, <laughs> that's yeah. that true. Yeah. But other than that, this true is that. the reason to be up in the morning. Thanks to everybody who's been watching and learning, because I certainly learn a lot when I come on here. You can find out about me and about my art over at rustleach.com. Please sign up for the email list. There is lots of news coming. We've got lots of things happening. There will be some news about the current campaign in the next day or so. Uh, so uh, keep your ears to the ground. Um, and if you've already backed uh, and you're not sure quite what's happening, we'll find out in the next 48 hours or so. Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter or go to Instagram, Facebook or anything like that, that'd be great. Uh, you can find out all those connections, like I say, the email list as well, over at russleach.com. Thank you. Excellent. Glenn, tell folks how they can find you. Uh, usual places, Facebook, Twitter, those kind of things. But if you go to Amazon, you can see and purchase, if you want to, all my 11 books. And you'll be able to get my magazine, Comics Unlimited, issue 15 is currently out. If you go over to New Haven Publishing, you'll be able to pick up a copy of my book about my visits to see Jack Kirby. And if you go to Fund My Comic, you'll be able to pick up a copy of my Hatch Annotated book on there. So go on. From my comic, take a look. Sweet. And folks, I've been your host, Randy Zimmerman, uh, editor in chief of Arrow Comics. ArrowComics.store. If you go over there and take a look, <clears throat> there's all sorts of products available over there, and, and they're available for shipping immediately. Books like Calico of Shard. It's a fantasy book, uh, characters, a set of characters I created with artwork by C. Michael Lanning. Also, Paragon. It's kind of my version of Superman with artwork by J.R. Harris. Herobot Zero which I did a lot of work on, though this cover here is by some weirdo named Scott Rosma, who might be back back with us one of these days. We miss him so. Also um, known as the Scarlet Pimpernel. Also known as the Scarlet Pimpernel. Yeah, there's two issues of Herobot Zero over there. I recommend number one, just because it's got his origin in it, and I did the majority of the work on it. So go over there and enjoy that. Also, The Fool is over there as well, the rodeo clown of justice. And now, it should be at least by now, Alice in Chains should be available over there as well. Nice, horrific uh, title of a young lady who uh, escapes the lab and finds out that she can shoot chains out of the palm of her hand. So, go over there and... As you do. It's a, That's a good it, superpower. It's a humor tale. Speaking of superpowers, this Sunday, 9 a.m., we are looking at Torchy. What a great, great book. The girl with the superpower to cloud men's minds and turn them into wolves just by a huh. look. Have them drop their tongues just like Tex Avery's uh, wolf character. In, uh, who in published Torchy? Uh, this was in Quality Wolf. Comics way back when. Oh. Uh -huh. ran, ran in another quality feature. Look at this. This artwork is, is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Let me find a great page here. Not, who not did the artwork, it. Randy? Bill Ward did the majority of the work. Gil Fox is also credited, but I'm pretty sure it's Bill. Look at that stuff. Oh, just great mm -hmm. material here. Great good wow. girl art. This oh. Sunday. Exactly right. This Sunday, 9, 9 a.m. over at Sunday Funnies. Next week, next Friday at 5 a.m., we'll go through some more Two-Fisted Tales, and then uh, um, we'll see what we do the Sunday after that. I'm thinking about pulling out a little bit of Alfredo Alcala. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Ah. Can't go wrong and with taking that. a look. You can't. <clears throat> Randy off That's the top turnbuckle. Thinking about, Whoa! thinking about that earlier uh, about what to do. I've got a nice, nice, uh, uh, unusual piece of work by Al Cala that is well worth the time to go over on a Randy Sunday. I've got some things to gun. show quickly. 
That's in, okay. If you if you uh, if you uh, got some stuff from our campaign, the, uh, the black and white. Oh, there we are. Pinups are in. Rather lovely. Great. Pinups black are and white done. Pinups. Yep. Um, but also, even more importantly, I'll put that one sec. The color one. <laughs> We're finalizing that print uh, uh, file now. Just getting a few last-minute touches in. Wow! There we are. Right. Look at there. It's coming ah, really great. nice. So the first fifty of those signed and numbered. We're literally crossing crossing our T's and dotting our I's and making sure the punctuation's right on that uh, Shadow Kingdom before we send it to press. But there'll be more news on that. We're going there. There's been a, a little glitch in some of the payments and we'll we'll uh talk about that campaign as soon as it's back open yeah. so uh pay attention probably this this friday we'll have some some big news on that uh so that if if you miss the campaign you really haven't missed the campaign yet yeah so be patient and uh, we want everybody to see this work uh, we're so proud of it yeah. and uh and we want you all to asking, see it enjoy it um you know, if they if they could get hold of it, we weren't going to go in demand, but some we had some small issues happen. So the fates have meant that we will go in demand, which means that some of you are going to be able to get the book. So we'll, we'll just hold back on the printing just for a little while, so we can see those uh, those people come in. Just for a little bit. Yep. Just a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. I know it's like pulling teeth for Randy. <clears throat> demand. Yeah, I'm I'm eager to have this book in my hands. I'll tell you that yeah, much for sure. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to see it. Yeah. Genuine Comics in the house. Like and subscribe. Thanks, Dave, so much. Go over there and take a look at Genuine Comics. Two perfect ten. Well worth your time. Fundmycomics.com, folks. You can go over there and see Hatch Annotated. You can find Devil Flyer over there. You can. I think The Fool is still available over there as well. As you, If you want to purchase that from there, you're more than welcome. Devil Flyer says, hey, Dave, hey, Dave. As, yeah. as well. will, we, will we be, like, picking shadow kingdom apart will we be looking at it someday maybe someday i, I think yeah. we could flick through it yeah, yeah. See what flick like through it real quick yeah. flip flick it be proud of it right there you are folks i am yeah. proud of it yeah 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 but oh yeah there's, yeah, me there's too. more on the way yep more on the way a lot more coming that's why we want you to see it the the story itself is such a springboard for ideas and characters it's difficult to decide where to go to next there's so many openings for stories to tell and so much for, for us to show you. So, folks, thanks a lot. We're going to go out with a little uh, little bump for Shadow Kingdom and uh, a few other things. And we'll see you on Sunday, Sunday morning, 9 a.m. for Sunday Funnies. Then we're back here again, 5 a.m. Folks, this, uh, we do this stuff because we love it. We show this stuff off because we. this is... This is our passion. This is our joy. This is our entertainment. If you find comics entertaining as well, tell people, you know, give comics as gifts. Just hand somebody a comic book one of these days and have them sit there and enjoy it and everywhere. read it. Books. Books. Books, books, comics are everywhere. Books. It used to be in books. little spiral racks. Yeah. Books. Oh, look at that Captain Britain. Anyway. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Glenn doesn't want to show off his collection. That's okay. He's got it all behind him anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, it's so uh, behind him. Yeah, it's all it's there. That, all that, mine's back back behind that curtain too. It's all a and mess. that that is half of it. It's oh, insured yeah. oh. by Lords of London. Oh. He can't pull it out just at a moment's notice. That's, that's, what, that's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> what does that make you, Doug? It means you're a catcher, not a pitcher. Anyway. <laughs> Yes, this is what I like. It. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks again for stopping by. Buy alternative and independent comics, especially us. We love comics. Share See comics. You. Tell people about comics. That's for Tanya. Let's just try to be positive. Uh -huh. Too much, too much trolling and negativity in the world as it is. We're in, we're in the funny book business. So uh, let's have some fun. We're not that. Funny, See everybody but... soon. Say what? Not like to have some money, is that what you said? What? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, you know. Yes, please. Could I could please have spiritual. some more? I you like could. money. We all like money. You could be a spiritual guru. So th this is the divine intervention. You could become a spiritual guru on your own, but you just have to tie your shoes, and you just have to know how to eat burritos backwards.
No. Nice. What was that? This is not a shawai. We it's need never a shawai. total concentration. Once again, this time, beans in a burrito. We Exactly. Bye, Jack. We really shook the pillars of heaven, didn't we, Wang? No horseshit, Jack. No horseshit. Hey, kids, you want to see some great comics? It's comic book show and tell twice a week. Comics by night, every Friday at 5 a.m. Eastern. And the Sunday Funnies, every Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern on the Indie Comics Network YouTube channel. Void were prohibited, not available with any other offers. Some side effects may include loss of boredom and a sudden urge to read more comics. Check with your doctor if a sudden rash appears. Taste the biscuit. Taste the goodness of the biscuit. 